From its rise to its fall, the Benin Kingdom reflects an important part of African history, symbolising strength yet also teaching us about its flaws and its weaknesses. In today's video, we will be exploring the Kingdom to appreciate its history, culture and beliefs, but most importantly to learn from it. Hello fellow learners and welcome or welcome back to Learnism where we cover content on history, mythology, philosophy and more. In this video we will be covering the Kingdom of Benin, a kingdom not well known to many but one with a very interesting history. I believe it's essential for us to understand pre-colonial history to understand black history more holistically. If you do enjoy today's video make sure to like, comment and subscribe to support the channel and our growth. Thank you, and without further ado, let's get into the video. The Kingdom of Benin was a very wealthy West African kingdom that was formally established in the 13th century. The kingdom began due to discontent amongst the Edo people who lived within the kingdom, as they no longer wanted to be ruled by the present rulers at the time. These rulers were called the Ogisos. The Ogiso ruled the land now called the Benin Empire for over 1000 years prior to the Obas from 40 BC to 1180 AD. Under the Ogiso's reign, the Benin Empire was called Igodo Migodo, named after Igodo, the first Ogiso. They then asked the prince from the Efe Kingdom, a prominent West African kingdom at the time, and this created the first Oba of Benin, whose name was Eweka, the son of the prince of Efe. Benin became famous for its craftsmen, particularly in ivory, wood, brass and bronze. It went on to become one of the greatest kingdoms in West Africa, with its territory ranging from southwestern Nigeria into present-day Ghana. It's said that the present-day Ga people from Ghana are able to trace their ancestry back to ancient Benin. The capital city of the Benin Empire was called Edo which is now known as Benin City in present-day Nigeria. Edo people living in the Benin Kingdom believe that the Supreme God was called Osaoba, often abbreviated to Osa. In many Edo names, you will see the name Osa included, such as Eseosa, meaning God's gift, and Osas, meaning all are for God. It is quite common that African names have some form of intentional meaning behind them. So if you have a friend from an African country with an interesting name, ask them the meaning. Let me know some interesting names you've heard in the comments. Aside from the supreme god Osa, there were other major gods worshipped in the Benin Kingdom who were said to be offspring of Osa. There was Oloku, god of water, who was said to live in the river of Ethiopia which the Edo people believed was the source of all water. He was a very popular god amongst them. And the other popular gods were Ogun, god of iron and water, as well as Ogio, who is the god of death. In the Edo traditional religion, the world is divided into two different realms, the physical realm as well as the spiritual realm. In the spirit world, this is where ancestors, gods and other supernatural beings are said to reside. The spirit world has a large influence on the world of the living and is seen as parallel to the physical world, with ancestors living in villages identical to the ones they lived in while alive. As a result, a lot of the traditional religion in Edo is ancestor focused, with Edo people performing rituals and sacrifices to honour their ancestors so that they bring blessings. One interesting fact to know is that there was overlap in terms of the Yoruba beliefs and the Benin people's beliefs because of the fact that the Oba who ruled Benin were from the Yoruba kingdom of Ife. So we see the names of gods like Ogun who is a well-known Yoruba god. One of the Kingdom of Benin's most notable feats was the creation of the Great Wall of Benin built in 1010 AD. The wall was roughly 16,000 kilometers in circumference, making it one of the largest walls ever known to be built. It served the purpose of protection from invaders. The wall holds a place in the Guinness World Record as the longest earthworks in the world prior to the mechanical era as the wall was primarily built from earth. 
The first European country Benin was known to have made contacts with was Portugal. During the 15th century, the Portuguese explorers made contacts with the Benin people, eventually establishing trade relations. They mainly traded peppercorn, ivory and palm oil, which were all very valuable at the time, due to a lack of access to them within Europe. They would do so in exchange for items such as guns and brass. The brass would be melted down to create the statues and items often associated with the Benin Empire. Unfortunately, slaves were also traded, with Benin soldiers raiding neighbouring kingdoms in order to sell to Europeans. And prior to the 1650s, only women were sold as slaves. However, as time went on, it eventually included men. One important factor to look into when looking at the history of African kingdoms is that the concept of blackness or being of one people did not exist until much later. As a result, kingdoms viewed neighbouring kingdoms as completely separate entities, completely separate people ultimately serving to the detriment of many African kingdoms. When colonialism hit Africa in full force, the Kingdom of Benin is no exception to this. It was annexed by Britain in 1897, with much of their architecture and their Great War being destroyed. Their fall can be partially attributed to internal disputes occurring within the Benin Kingdom at the time. These disputes ranged from things like disagreeing on the European intrusion and the slave trade, as well as disputes on the succession of the next Oba. This resulted in an internal civil war. Their weakened state made them an easy target and a vulnerable target for foreign invasion. Eventually, the Benin Empire became a part of Nigeria, and so the Edo people now reside in the Edo state of Nigeria in the south. Thank you so much for listening, I hope you enjoyed today's video, it's been a pleasure learning with you all and I'll see you next time.